Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to take a look at gradient boosting regression with Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now, gradient boosting is just another form of boosting, you know, in contrast to Attaboost that just uses a slightly different approach to, you know, reaching the final calculation, if you will. Of course, this is another form of ensemble learning and it's commonly associated with decision trees, as you probably remember from the prior video. So well, the fancy word for grading is just slope. If you remember, you know, looking at two dimensional stuff in geometry or whatever, you have to calculate the slope of a line. With the grading, it's another name for slope, but of course you have more than two dimensions often. And so what we have to do is we have to, of course, deal with these various hyperparameters that we have to tune when we are making our various decision trees. So the number of estimators, you know, the number of variables, the learning rate, that's like how fast it kind of, you know, calculates the gradients. It's kind of hard to explain that, but it's another important hyperparameter. The subsampling, like how many samples it has to pull each time and the max depth, like how far down the tree it'll go. So here are our, our steps right here. We're gonna prepare the data, it's real simple this time the baseline decision tree model. So we're gonna make a simple decision tree. That's gonna be like our minimum expectation, if you will. Then we're gonna do our hyper, hyper parameter tuning and we will conclude with creating our gradient boosting model. So here's some of the initial code right here. Now we've done a prior video using gradient boosting for classification. So most of this video is the same. Except, of course, here in line one, we have to import our gradient boosting regressor rather than our gradient boosting classifier. And then we gotta, of course, set up the code we need for our decision tree. Line three is gonna be used for making our grid when we have to try to, to find a specific value for our hyperparameters. NumPy, Pi dataset is where we get our data from. Pandas, cross val score, this is for our cross validation. And also uh, line number eight there, is for our k-fold cross validation. So we set that up. So our data preparation, we're gonna go ahead and do that. It's really simple. What we're gonna do here is we're taking some data called cancer and we're just going to calculate how much, how much people lost weight you know, while they were sick with cancer based on these variables here in line number two. You can, of course, look up what these variables are about by using the um, show, show doc uh, argument when, when you uh, are using the data uh, function right here if you wanted to. And of course, one thing I forgot to mention is we're gonna drop the missing values in A's. That's done. All right, now the second line of code here, we're gonna make our baseline model. And so we're gonna do a k-fold uh, cross validation, tenfold at, to be specific, that's line number one. So we're making a decision tree. And then right here is we're gonna make a for loop where we go through one through each time. So the first split, the second split, et cetera, and we're gonna use our regressor. So what we're doing here is we're going to be changing the depth of the, of the, of the max depth from one, from one to two to three to four, et cetera. And the random state is the seed number. And so when the max depth is greater than depth, so that could be greater than 10, if you will, it is going to break and it's going to share our score with us. Now the reason I didn't copy and paste this code in is because the white space is kind of tricky. And so uh, it can really be frustrating. One of the weird things about Python is the love of white space. Don't know quite why, but that's how it is. And so you can see when we print it out that the lowest value is probably the, I think the lowest value is the best value. So when we have a max depth of two, that's what we get here. And so notice how it goes from one to nine. If you wanted to go one to 10, you'd have to change the range to 11 probably, yeah, change the range to 11, excuse me. So now we know what to expect if we were to run our model um, using a decision tree, if we use a max depth of two. Now, we need to tune all of the various hyperparameters to try to increase or to improve the uh, performance of our model. So we've already talked about these, the number of estimators, the learning rate, the subsample, and of course, max depth. And we've talked about each of these already. So let's go ahead and put these in here. So I'm gonna grab this and show you. It's kind of long and messy. 
All right, you can see that's really rough. Let me just help this out a little bit. Okay. All right, so here we go. So first we make an instance of our gradient boosting regressor and we call it GBR. This right here in lines two and three is our actual grid. So what we're doing here is we're going to use three different values for the number of estimators, five, 1,000, and 2,000. For our learning rate, we're also going to use three different values, 0 0.001, 0 0.01, and 0 0.1. Max depth is gonna be set to one, two, and four. Subsample to using half the data, 75% in all, and the random state is gonna be fixed at one. After that, we're gonna have search here. We're gonna use our grid search function. Estimator is gonna be GBR, that comes from line number one. And then parameter grid is gonna come from line number two and three. So that's what we're doing right here. And then our criteria is gonna be the mean squared error. And the number of jaws has to do with the processors and our validation is gonna be cross validation, CV. So let's go ahead and see, it's done already. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next one. So we haven't learned anything interesting yet, but here we go, let me just show you. Now, I'm not going to run this code because it takes a long time. The output is below, right here. But what's happening in these lines of code is, first we do a search, search.fit. We got the word search from up here. And so we're gonna fit the model using uh, our independent and dependent values. Then we're gonna print the best parameters. And then we're gonna print the best score using those parameters. So after doing the analysis, a learning rate of 0 0.01, a max depth of one, 500 uh, number of estimators set to 500, and a subsample of 0 0.5 will give you a mean square error of, of 160. That's the best we can do uh, with these particular values set for the hyperparameters. We could continue to explore this and to try to come up with other ways to approach this, but for our purposes, that's what it, how it works out. Now, what you do now is you take these values here from these hyperparameters and you put them in your actual model and they should basically reproduce themselves. Okay, that's how it works out. So you no longer have to explore what the best value is. So we're gonna just go ahead and copy and paste this. So here I use my, I set up my uh, uh, instance here. I use my GBR2, gradient boosting regressor is the function. Notice how I set the number of estimators to 500, the learning rate to the recommended values here. These are all straight from my K-fold cross-validation analysis. And then of course I want to calculate the score. And so I want the, the mean squared error. So I use the cross bow score function and I want the, you know, the mean, GPR2, X and Y are my independent and dependent variable. CV is cross-validation. And so it's gonna go through this. And if you give it a moment, you can see I got the exact same score because I put in the exact same values for the hyperparameters. And so that, so this is how you would go forward with that. So let me see if I can try to summarize what we learned and conclude this video. So what we learned here is we learned how to approach gradient boosting regression using Python. And so you have to set up certain hyperparameters that you can see right here. There's four of them in our purpose. You could be more or less, it's up to you. And then we went through this four step process, data preparation, baseline model, hyperparameter tuning, and gradient boosting model. So we have our modules that we ran. We set up our data right here. We dropped some NAs. We wanted to predict weight loss. And then here, we're just setting up our baseline model. And then here we tuned our hyperparameters right here. Down here we got the printout, and this is the best score we can get with those hyperparameters. And then we took those hyperparameter hyper values and we put them in our actual model and of course got the same score. So my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you so much for watching this video and you take care.